Assalamu alaikum everyone. Peace be upon you. I welcome you all to Brethren of Purity, a platform that is dedicated to the study of the authentic teachings of Islamic philosophy, falsafa, and mysticism, the circle. In this current age, I see many people having so many questions, allegations, and confusions about uh, philosophy, and in particular, Islamic philosophy, falsafa. And uh, it is absolutely normal to have such views because uh, the misinformation uh, that has been spread uh, about Islamic philosophy by anti falsify Islamic scholars as well as some Western academics who claim that all the Islamic philosophers were, you know, atheists or rejectors of religion. So due to this, normal Muslims have all kinds of questions about uh, philosophy, such as, you know, what is Islamic philosophy? What is falsafa? Uh, is philosophy and falsafa, are they two distinct things or are they the same? Uh, is every kind of thinking, philosophy, uh, are philosophy and theology distinct from each other or are they the same? And, you know, the most important question is uh, studying philosophy haram or not. If it is uh, not haram, then why have so many scholars such as Ghazali or Ibn Taymiyyah have warned against studying it? So, inshallah, today we will try to answer some of these questions. And uh, uh, in this video, I will try to clear a confusion regarding the term phil philosopher. Uh, and falsafa and then I'll present basic uh, outline of Islamic philosophy and what different uh, thinkers have thought about it. So starting from the distinction between Islamic philosophy, falsafa and philosophy in, in general. This distinction is very important to understand because it has caused a great confusion in Islamic circles uh, and even some very well-known senior scholars do not seem to understand what the distinction uh, really is. In Arabic, the word philosophy is synonymous with falsafa. The falsafa is the word that is used for philosophy in Arabic. This includes philosophy of everyone, you know, from Heidegger to Kant to Farabi to Avicenna to Derrida, or all, all the major philosophers, you know. This usage of the word falsafa is synonymous with how philosophy is generally used in, uh, you know, general and academic, even some academic contexts. For example, if I am to read from Oxford Dictionary, it would define philosophy as the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, especially when considered as an academic discipline, and a particular uh, system of philosophical thought or the study of the th theoretical bases and branches of uh, uh, any particular knowledge or experience. In this way, nearly any thinker, any deep thinker can be classified as a philosopher. Anyone who has thought about the fundamental nature of uh, anything is uh, essentially engaging in uh, some type of philosophy. Even those who try to refute philosophy, such as uh, Ghazali or Ibn Taymiyyah in the Islamic tradition, are also engaging in some type of philosophy, essentially. This is one sense of the word uh, falsafa or philosophy that is used in, in a more general and even sometimes in an academic context. But the uh, how falsafa is used in Islamic context, it has a very specific sense that developed during the Islamic golden age. Falsafa at that time used to refer to Islamic Neoplatonic philosophy. This does not apply to all philosophy. Falsafa at that time was used to just explain the views of Avicenna, Farabi and so on. So Islamic Neoplatonic philosophy is a very particular kind of philosophy with its own ethics, metaethics, ontology, epistemology and you know all the other kinds of philosophies are included in this but they have a very uh, certain and specific uh, set of views that that they adhere to and this set of views this was called falsafa in the islamic context in the medieval islamic context right so it is not right to uh, confuse these two terms falsafa in a general term and islamic neoplatonic philosophy the tradition of falsafa these two are two distinct terms and one should understand it when they are trying to engage with any text of islamic philosophy and when they are trying to understand what islamic philosophy is or when they are even trying to understand how people have critiqued the tradition of falsafa and how people have critiqued islamic 
philosophy, right? So in that sense, uh, uh, even Ghazali, uh, in a very general sense, can be called a philosopher, right? Uh, in the Western academic sense, because in so far that he tried to use rationality and reason to refute the arguments presented by philosopher, he was a philosopher. But it is not appropriate to say that Ghazali was a philosoph, uh, you know, a philosophy in an Islamic Neoplatonic uh, context because he is obviously uh, he was obviously against them and calls their view kufr and heresy and rules for the necessity of the killing uh, you know wujub al-qatl of uh, Islamic philosophers or philosopher so at least the Ghazali of uh, the Hafat al-philosopher is himself not a philosopher it must be understood that uh, uh, whenever Ghazali or Ibn Taymiyyah or these people are talking about falsafa, they are not talking about uh, philosophy in general, uh, you know, academic Western context, how we use uh, philosophy very vaguely, but rather they are referring to the specific school of Islamic uh, Neoplatonic philosophers such as uh, uh, Farabi, Avicenna, Suharwardi and so on. So the second point that is more important to understand is that what is falsifa in the first place? What do Islamic philosophers believe in? And is it permissible in Islam? And uh, were philosopher the cause of uh, the gold, golden age of Islam? So depending on who you ask, you will get different answers to this question. I, I will try to present uh, the opinion of both those who follow and admire the school of uh, philosopher and those who are against it. It is on the viewer to decide which position they eventually find more reasonable and want to follow. For philosopher, falsafa is the wisdom, you know, al-hikmah. Hikmah is one of the primary words along with falsafa that is used to denote the tradition of Islamic philosophers. They believe that hikmah is eternal and innate wisdom that is pre present in all humans and the wisdom that was present in all the message uh, messages uh, sent by God or in all the revelation uh, that, that, that were sent by God. Due to this, one can find traces of hikmah in many cultures, in many civilizations, in many philosophies because it, because it is the part of the fundamental message of God that can also be proven and understood through reason and you know, natural theology. In this sense, hikmah is part of the uh, innate human na nature, which is called fitra, and one can realize the truth of hikmah by understanding their own uh, innate human nature, that is to say, by using the God-given logic and rationality correctly. There are many verses uh, that philosopher can and do bring uh, in this context. To list all of them would uh, require a separate video, but uh, you know some of them are, for example, Ya yuhal lazina amanu la takunu kal lazina nasullaha fa ansahum anfusahum ulaikahum ulfasikun or fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha and you know so on and so forth. So it basically says that. Uh, humans have a journal and innate nature and if they recognize their own self they will recognize who who god is and they'll understand the eternal truth they will understand the hikmah that is why in islamic philosophical tradition there is very uh, there's a very famous saying man arafa nafsahu wa qad arafa rabbahu the one who knows their own self they know god right so to the philosopher, the fact that some of their views resemble certain traditions of Taoism, Hinduism, Buddhism or Greek philosophy is not a problem because they see these traditions as a manifestation of truth, although limited in some respects. They believe that these similarities are rather a testament to the fact that hikmah is, a, is the eternal truth and that a human can independently realize it as well. This notion is greatly expanded by Ibn Tufail in his novel Hay ibn Yaqzan, uh, where the protagonist Hay, who is a feral child and spends his life on an island without any human interaction, realizes hikmah by just using the self-evident truths which are immediately present to all humans through immediate knowledge, ilm-e-huduri. 
هاي بليفز هاي هاي بليف ان حكمه شوز ذات ات از سينونيموس وذ فطره بيكوز ا بيرسون كان ريلايز ات ايفن اف نو بدي ايلس تيتشز ات تو ذيم فلاسفه بليف ذات جاد هاز جيفن هيومنز ريزن يو نو عقل ذات از برايمري ذات از ذا برايمري تول فور نوينج ذا تروث نو هيومن ات اني بوينت شود هولد سچ ا بليف that goes against the primary dictates of reason therefore if the interpretation of the scripture i e quran is going against the primary dictates of reason that is to say if it is going against the three laws of logic and whatever can be deduced through it then it must be rejected and the text must be interpreted in line with the reason because the text is truth and the reason also takes you to the truth so two truths cannot uh, contradict each other as far as uh, the question of falsafa being one of the causes of golden age and subsequently enlightenment is concerned it is absolutely correct to say that these works of Uh, philosophy were highly influential in the field of uh, you know science philosophy astronomy uh, mathematics and medicine and so on and so forth many philosophers like avicenna farabi umar khayyam atusi uh, they were polymaths and masters of multiple fields of science and philosophy works of these philosophers uh, have influenced not only the muslim world and medieval and christian uh, jewish philosophy but also they have inspired later enlightenment debates such as the ones on human nature and natural state that were inspired by hay ibn yaqzan of uh, ibn tufail or uh, the ontology of uh, spinoza and leibniz uh, it is not false to say that these works of philosophy have positively shaped and contributed to the development of the modern society as we know it today on the other hand the islamic world has seen great opposition to philosophy as well there are several reasons for this uh, the opponents have disagreement at two levels one methodological that is to say that the met- methodology that philosophy use is flawed uh, and the uh, aql should not be given preference over the naql and uh, the doctrinal uh, clashes uh, are also there such as the dis- disagreements with the belief of uh, beliefs of philosophy such as the view of the no- on the knowledge of god or or the material resurrection or the eternity of the universe the other side believes that the text has great importance and it should not be analyzed uh, it should be analyzed rather literally even if a meaning goes against reason it should be accepted because the human reason is limited and it cannot comprehend a reality that is as complex as god they also argue that had hikma been true it would have been mentioned clearly in, in the authoritative text nusus you know quran and sunna the fact that salaf salihin did not believe in hikma proves that it is not true and it is merely an addition to the religion that was inspired by greek philosophy they have also they also have a problem with the approach of philosophy which prefers reason over the book because in their belief reason should submit to the book and the interpretation of the salaf should be accepted as it is even if it goes against the primary dictates of reason due to this scholars like ghazali and ibn taymiyah among others passed very harsh judgments against philosophy and deemed their killing to be permissible and mandatory one must realize that though th- that while it is true that philosophy were called atheists and non muslims and heretics and more you know this does not mean that western narrative which is also presented by some groups in uh, muslim countries as well is true that the philosophy were indeed atheists and they were just trying to exist uh, in a muslim society and they were highly oppressed and they didn't actually believe in islam this is simply not true at all all the philosophy were theists and they were muslims they believed in quran and sunna just because their critics called them atheists does not mean that they were actually atheists themselves 
This view that philosophy our atheists is just based on the modernist enlightenment notion that religion and reason are two separate things and that they, they can never sub truly subsist within one person. This notion can be true for enlightenment thinkers, but it is not true for philosophers because not only they used reason, but they also believed in their religion. Ibn Rushd, for example, was a jurist, a faqih, as well as philosopher. Mullah Sadra wrote a whole tafsir of Quran. Avicenna as well wrote the tafsir of Quran, explanation of Quran. Similarly, to hukama, mysticism and philosophy are not two separate realities. They, act, they In their view, they actually point towards the same reality. This is why uh, many hukama, many philosophers were not only philosophers, but uh, they were mystics as well. Such as uh, Sheikh al-Ishraq, Yahya ibn Habaj Suhra Vardi, uh, Mir Damad, ibn Arabi, uh, Mullah Sadra, Alama Taba Tabai. So these people were also mystics as well because in their view, mysticism and falsafa uh, takes you to the same reality, although through different moods. One uses Ilm Husuli and the other uses Hulm Huzuri. Therefore, the notion that philosophers were somehow less Islamic than the others uh, in their commitment to Islam is absolutely false. So, and one, one should not think along those lines unless they have actually read the works of philosopher. Uh, I hope that this video have uh, has served uh, as a concise introduction to, to the definition of falsifa and uh, the basic clashes that the opponents of falsifa have, have against the falsifa tradition. And in upcoming videos, inshallah, we will try to go over the topics at, at a greater length uh, and explain the particulars of the views of the philosopher and uh, present the rational arguments behind them as well. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, like, share and subscribe to this channel so the rational doctrines of Islamic philosophy can reach a wider audience and the Islamic golden age can be brought back once again. Um, thank you for uh, watching this video. Until next time, peace. Uh, Ma'as-salama. Shukra lak.